Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, Rottler webinar series. Um, today we're going to talk about preparing for brown recluse spiders. And, um, you know, this time of the year we tend to tend to run into a lot of these. Um, let me tell you a little bit about them first of all, and then we'll talk about identifying them. Um, you know, the big thing about this spider is they do like to be reclusive, hence the name. Um, so they, they do like to um, live indoors and outdoors. Um, outdoors, it, it really depends on the weather, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But um, indoors, once they gain access inside, if they've got ample food source, um, you know, other in, insects typically, um, they tend to do pretty well because they go and hide in some of those unusual places of the house. Um, but, um, you know, if you do find yourself, um, you know, in the same place, um, there are some things you can do. You can use a vacuum. Um, you can use a sticky board to catch these things. Um, but, um, you know, this isn't a spider that's going to run after you and, and try to bite you. Um, typically, when they do bite, it's more of a reactive bite. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty unusual to get, get bit. Now, I'm sure you all have heard horror stories about brown recluse bites. And, and yes, it is a very dangerous bite. Um, but um, the bottom line is that this, this is not an aggressive spider and um, they tend to get a bad name for themselves, but um, just because of the bite, but um, that's one thing that we see. So um, oh, back to the, I, I wanna talk a little bit about the identification. So, um, you, know, you know, the big thing with these guys, you know, they're called the violin spider, the fillback spider. But if you can see right here on the back of the, they call this the cephalothorax. That's where all the legs attach to the, to the spider. Um, there's this little violin shaped um, marking on the body. It's just dark colored hairs on this spider um, that kind of look like that. So um, if you're not familiar with that um, and you're not willing to get close enough to see that, um, you know, smash it. That'd be one way to get close to it or, or catch it on one of the glue boards. Um, the other thing about them um, is they're typically hairless. Now, there are some fine hairs that are on their bodies that they use for just, you know, detecting motion and things like that. Um, but it's not going to be a big furry, hairy spider like your wolf spiders are. So um, we get a lot of them here that people ask us to identify. And, um, you know, typically most of the time, um, it's a wolf spider that everybody thinks is this guy here. So. Um, if you would think that you've been bitten, um, there are some, some signs that typically um, are characteristic of this bite. Um, first and foremost, it's gonna be typically painful. Um, if the site of the bite would form any kind of an ulcer or a blister um, with any kind of dark colors to it, um, you know, or you find that you get an infection in this area, um, you, know, you should probably seek out medical attention. Getting to this bite quickly can, can um, save you a lot of trouble down the road. Um, typically the sore uh, ulcers, if you will, and the tissue dies, um, creating a scar. So um, the sooner you get that taken care of, the better off you're going to be. Um, and obviously, if you have any breathing issues, you know, or some kind of an anaphylactic shock, um, obviously seek medical attention right away as well. So that's a 911 call there. So, um, so be careful in that regard. Um, as far as territory, um, you know, being in the Midwest here, we are right in the heart of brown recluse spider um, territory. Uh, we see and deal with them on an uh, everyday basis at Rottler. Um, we catch quite a few of them on glue boards. That's one of the big tools we use to go after them, let alone some of the different insecticides that are out there. But, um, and we target some of our applications into those areas that I talked about for the hiding spots for them. But um, there are a couple different species of um, brown recluse out there. There's a desert species, which is in typically in the, the southwest part of the country. Um, and then the hobo spider, which isn't a relative to the recluse, but it, it's up in the Pacific Northwest. That's another one that gives, has some bad uh, characteristics about them as well. A little more aggressive spider there too. So, um, you know, questions are, where can you find these things? Um, you know, typically if you're outside working around the house, working in the landscaping, um, you know, we ge generally tell you, keep an eye out. Um, they, they can be a multitude of different colors, as you can see by this one here on the rock. It's kind of a dark color um, where some of the species are, you know, kind of yellowish, lightish. Um, a lot of that has to do with the diet of the insect. So what are they feeding on? This guy might be feeding on, 
dark American roaches, and this one might be feeding on some smaller, you know, smaller, lighter colored insects, but um, that does have something to do with the color. Um, so um, outside, you know, like I said, around the landscaping areas, um, you'll even get them in the garage um, and even the stored items in the garage. So if you're taking those, those stored items like boxes and things like that and transferring it inside, that's one way that you can translocate this insect, or the, I'm sorry, this, this arachnid into your home. So um, the number one place we probably see them the most are in attics and crawl spaces. Um, and those are the areas we focus a lot of our treatment efforts into. Um, you know, you find them in closets as well. It's a quiet place, um, you know, and that's where you store a lot of clothing. So, um, and that's typically when you have the conflict between the spider and humans is, is when you get into changing of seasons. So this fall, you know, next couple months, you might start breaking out those sweatshirts or those, um, you know, sweaters um, or the boots. Um, those are the times you want to shake those things out and make sure that there's none of these spiders in there. Um, and that's typically when you get the bite is it, it's a reactive bite. It's, you know, you put your arm in that sleeve of that sweater and, you know, he happens to be or she happens to be there and she bites out a reaction. So um, the other places they like to hide up in the living space, you know, underneath furniture. Bottom line is this insect doesn't, or this, this arachnid, and I keep calling it an insect, I'm sorry. Um, it's a spider. Um, eight legs. Um, they tend to they tend to like to stay out of you know high traffic areas. Um, high traffic areas might get them stepped on, and they're not going to do well in that environment. So um, so think about that when you're you're hunting these things out. If you're going to hunt these things out, um, and um, you know if you're going to place out some glue boards, um, that might be a good thing to do in those areas um, underneath the furniture and the closets, things like that. And I'll talk a little bit more about a, a glue board here in a minute, but. Um, I, I like to point this picture out, um, you know, because I, I did mention before, attics are probably the most popular place that we see them. Um, the reason being is there's a lot of access, as you can see by this daylight, this is the guttered area um, of this roof. So there's like a dormer here. Um, but, you know, when they build homes, they don't make that attic space airtight. Um, they actually ventilate it with, with large gaps on purpose to create a lot of ventilation up in the attic area. Now, the attic, um, this time of the year, it gets almost too hot for them and it'll literally drive them down into the living space where we've got air conditioned at 70, 75 degrees. Um, in the winter time, the heat rises and goes to these areas. So they may migrate towards these areas in the fall looking for a nice place to overwinter in your home. So, um, so that's, a big reason why I, I mentioned the attic space is such a popular area for them. Um, you'll find a lot of other bugs up here. So, um, you know, that spider does pretty well in this environment. Not a lot of traffic, a lot of food source, good temperatures, um, most of the time good temperatures. Um, but that's, that's a reason why we think the attics are a, a great place to treat. So, um, Glue boards, like I mentioned, you know, you can go out to the big box stores, you can pick up some of these glue boards relatively inexpensively. If you don't know or you suspect you have a brown recluse job, uh, problem in your home, I would put out glue boards just to kind of try to catch something. Um, it obviously immobilizes them so that you can identify them. Um, if you are going to use the, uh, the, the internet to help you with that identification, try to use the university sites, uh, University of Kentucky, University of Florida, um, there's also a bug guide out there um, that will help you identify this spider um, and um, kind of get you down that road of what you need to do next. Um, typically with these guys, it is a professional job. I don't know that it's a do-it-yourselfer job because of those, those odd areas of the home that you really have to go after, but um, you can also get those professionals to help you identify them if you're having trouble figuring out what it actually is. So. Um, as far as prevention as a homeowner, um, first and foremost, I always recommend trim the trees off the roof. Um, that tree is a ladder right over to your roof or that soffited area like I showed you where that daylight was in that attic picture. Um, that's a quick way for them to gain access into the house. Once they get up into that space, they have um, you know, access down through plumbing chases, um, down wires in the wall. Um, those are a lot of ways they can actually get down into the house as well. But trim those trees off so that they can't, can't um, just walk right onto your roof and get inside. 
Um, the other thing I always recommend is, is obviously using the caulk. Um, spiders don't need much of a space. Um, there's going to be a lot of temperature that's going to escape out of here in the fall. And um, that's what they're going to attract to. And that void right there, um, they could live their whole life in that void. Um, obviously, other insects are going to come in there. But um, as I mentioned before, exclusion is the best form of pest control that's out there. So um, other things you can do is install these door sweeps. They're usually pretty easy to put on. Some of them are just sticky tape. Um, others require a screw, um, two or three screws to put these on. And that usually you know, does a great job at keeping those insects from just walking right in underneath those doors. So um, with that, um, I, I, I thank you for attending today. Um, I do like to tell you though, that our signature program, um, we cover brown recluse spiders. So if you get a problem that's out of your control or you can't take care of, obviously get a hold of us and um, we can definitely help you out with that as far as that goes. Um, Sarah, are there any questions today? Oops. I do not have any. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Um, we will be hosting another webinar in August um, talking about silverfish. Um, this is a fabric pest that can kind of cause some problems with uh, your clothing, your suits, and, and things like that. But um, look out for that. Um, we appreciate you attending today. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to forward them to us, and uh, we'll try to get them answered for you. Thanks for attending.